In this video, we're going to take a look at finding areas using integration. Now, I'm just going to start this video by saying there are so many different ways these type of questions can be asked. And what I would recommend is, after maybe watching this video, having to go a few different types of these questions, whether it be from a textbook or a past paper, just to really kind of practice this as a topic. Um, like I said, I'm only presenting three different ways in which these questions can be asked, but there are so many different ways. Um, so it's definitely worth just practicing a few on your own, just to really kind of practice these skills. Okay. So let's just get started with the first question here. So what I've got now is this figure above, which shows the curve with equation y equals x squared minus 5x plus 8. And what I want to do here is just find the area of the shaded region that's bounded by the curve, the coordinate axes, so our y-axis and our x-axis, and then the straight line with equation x equals 2, which we can see here. So how do we do something like this? Well, this goes back to our work on definite integrals. What I can do here is integrate um, this curve here, so y equals x squared minus 5x plus 8. If I integrate that between 0 and 2, what that does is that gives me the area underneath this curve. Okay, so if I integrate between 0 and 2, then that would give me this region here. Let's call that R. Okay, that would give me that shaded region R. So like we said, we're just going to integrate this curve here. So we're integrating x squared minus 5x plus 8 with respect to x between 0 and to there okay so this should hopefully be a nice straightforward integral here just go term by term so i'm going to get x cubed over 3 so x cubed over 3 minus 5x so add 1 to the power divided by the new power so that's going to be minus 5x squared minus 5x squared over 2 and then finally we've got plus 8 here so that's going to be 8x okay so 8x now, we're integrating between 0 and 2 here, so all I need to do now is actually put in my upper limit, because once I substitute in the lower limit here, everything will be 0, so all we need to consider is the upper limit. So, let's substitute our upper limit in here, we're going to get 2 cubed over 3, minus 5 lots of 2 squared, so minus 5 lots of 2 squared over 2, and then plus 8 lots of 2. So plus 8 lots of 2. What I need to do now is just simplify here. So 2 cubed is 8, so I get 8 over 3. 2 squared is 4, so minus 5 times 4, so that's minus 20 over 2, so that's going to give me minus 10. And then finally, I've got 8 times 2, so that would be plus 16. Okay. So here, I'm just going to put this into my calculator. You can do it by hand if you really want, but I'll just put it into my calculator here. So 8 over 3 minus 10, and then plus 16. And what I get here then is 26 over 3. Okay, I get 26 over 3. Now, because we're talking about area here, this is technically units squared. We don't know the units here, so we just say this is 26 over 3 units squared. Typically, we don't put that when we're finding areas like this, but it is worth just mentioning here that you can put the units squared if you want, but we don't typically do it. Okay, but there we go either way. That would be our solution to the very first question there. Moving on to the next one here then, what I've got now is this quadratic, and this is a negative quadratic. Okay, we've got this N shape. Now what I'm looking to do is find this shaded region here. Again, let's just call this R. Okay, and the shaded region goes between A and B. And this question is scaffolded in a way so that we find the coordinates of A and B first, and then we find the exact area of the shaded region. So these coordinates of a and b will be where our curve here meets the x-axis. So that's when y is equal to 0. So for part a then, so for part a here, we're looking to find when our curve minus x squared plus x plus 6 is equal to 0. Now what I'm going to do is just check whether this factorizes. With a bit of luck, this will factorize. If not, we'd need to use something like the quadratic formula or something like that. But generally what you'll find here for these type of questions, just to make life a lot easier, is they will factorize. So let's just check whether this factorizes here. We'll get two brackets. And we've got minus x squared here, so we'll have a minus x at the front of one of these brackets. And an x at the front of the other bracket. So from the looks of this, this will be minus x plus 3 and x plus 2. Let's just double check this. So minus x squared. Uh, minus x times 2, so that's minus 2x, and then 3 times x, so we get 3x, so that would give me the positive x, so that's good, and then 3 times 2 give me positive 6, perfect. And this gives me the two solutions now for a and b. 
because I've got a solution here when minus x plus 3 is equal to 0. In that case, we get x equals 3. So that must be for the point b here. It's obviously a positive x solution. And then we also have x plus 2 is equal to 0. In that case, x will be equal to minus 2. And clearly that would be a here. So in that case, a is minus 2, 0. And b, let's do that over here, b is 3, 0. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to part A there, given the coordinates of A and B. For part B then, this is where we need to now find, or now find, the exact area of the shaded region. So like we said, all we're going to do now is integrate this curve here between A and B. So that's between minus 2 and 3. So let's have a go at this now. We'll integrate in minus x squared plus x plus 6 with respect to x between uh, minus 2 and positive 3. So again, we just integrate here term by term. So this should hopefully be straightforward to get started. So it's going to give me minus x cubed over 3. So we get minus x cubed over 3. I've got x here, so that'd be x squared over 2, so plus x squared over 2. And finally, we've got this plus 6 here, so that would be plus 6x. Okay, and then don't forget the limits of minus 2 and 3. So in this case, I will need to substitute both limits in here. Um, not quite as straightforward as the first question. So let's start with the upper limit here. So if we substitute in the upper limit here, then we're going to get minus 3 cubed. So minus 3 cubed over 3. Now we'll come back to simplifying in a moment. Um, so we'll just write everything out for now. So I've got x squared over 2, so that's going to be 3 squared over 2, plus 3 squared over 2, and then 6 lots of 3, plus 6 lots of 3. Now we subtract um, the lower limit in here, so subtract the lower limit, so that's going to be minus 2 cubed, so minus, so minus, minus 2 cubed. I could have presented this a little bit neater, but we'll go with it, over 3, plus x squared over 2. So x in this case are minus 2, so we get plus minus 2 all squared over 2, and then plus 6 lots of minus 2, plus 6 lots of minus 2 here. So let's start by simplifying this, this side here first. So let's do it by hand. So 3 cubed is 27 over 3, so that would be minus 9. So we get minus 9. 3 squared, that's 9 over 2, so plus 9 over 2. And then 6 lots of 3 is 18. Okay, so plus 18. Looks okay so far. We will minus. So let's simplify this bracket here. Um, so minus 2 cubed. So that will be minus 8. So I've got minus minus 8 over 3. So that will be positive 8 over 3. So just be very careful with your signs here. So that's 8 over 3. Minus 2 all squared. So that will be 4. So 4 over 2. So that will be plus 2. And then we've got 6 lots of minus 2. So that will be minus 12. Okay, so we're running out of room a little bit here. What I'll do is I'll just do the solution now in red here. Um, and let's just clear the top bit actually. Let's just do that first. Let's clear everything up here just so we've got enough room. Just so we've got enough room to finish this. There we go. So we'll finish the solution at the very top here. So we'll just make note of that here. Going all the way up to the top now. So Minus 9 plus 9 over 2 plus 18. Let's do that first. So 18 minus 9 plus 9 over 2. So that gives me 27 over 2. So we get 27 over 2 minus. So now let's evaluate this bracket here. So 8 over 3 plus 2 minus 12. And that gives me minus 22 over 3. So what I've got here is 27 over 2 minus minus 22 over 3. And again, you've got to be careful with the signs here. So if I've got 27 over 2, and I minus minus 22 over 3, that's the same as plus 22 over 3. So plus 22 over 3. And what I get here then is 125 over 6. Okay, so we get 125 over 6. And that's our shaded region here, R. Okay. And there we have it. Again, if you want to put units squared in, it's completely up to you. 
Uh, but either way, 125 over 6 gives us our solution to that question there. Moving on to the very last question here now, where what I've got here is the figure above, which shows the curve with equation of y equals x cubed minus x. So it just says using calculus. So when it says using calculus, it just means use integration. We want to find the area of the shaded region. So we're looking for this region here. Okay. Again, I'm going to call this R. You don't have to, but I just prefer to call it that. So if we use integration here, we need to integrate between this point here, which is the origin, and this point here. Now we need to find this point. It's not given to us. So this point here is given when x cubed minus x is equal to zero. So let's do that ourselves. So x cubed minus x is equal to zero. So we're setting this equal to zero now. Well, I can factorize here. So I can pull an x out. So we get x lots of x squared minus one is equal to zero. And hopefully you notice that this here is a difference of two squares. So this gives me my three solutions here. We get x lots of x minus one times x plus one. And this is all equal to zero. So in this case, now we get three solutions. We get this solution here of x equals zero, which is the origin here. We get positive one, which would be this solution here. And we also get minus one, which would be this solution here, but we don't need it, but let's just try it down here. So what we're doing is we're integrating x cubed minus x between zero and one. Okay, so we're gonna integrate x cubed minus x between zero and one here. Okay, and this with respect to x. So this should be a straightforward integration here, go term by term. So in that case, what I'm going to get then is x to the power of 4 over 4 minus x squared over 2. Okay, like so. And this is between 0 and 1. Now the good thing here is when I substitute in the lower limit, this will all be equal to 0 because we've got 0 to the power of 4 over 4 minus 0 squared over 2. That will all just be 0. So all I need to actually consider here now is the upper limit. So let's substitute in the upper limit here. Well, in that case, what I'm going to get then is 1 to the power of 4 over 4. So that's just a quarter. We get a quarter there. Minus 1 squared over 2. So minus a half there. Okay. And it is really as simple as that. I know it looks quite straightforward. Um, but in this case, I've got a quarter and a minus a half. What I'm going to get then is minus a quarter. Now, you might be wondering why we've got a negative solution here. How does that make sense? Because we're talking about area. And the reason for that is because we're now integrating this region here, which is below the x-axis. So when you integrate and it's below the x-axis, that area will be negative. Okay. Now, like I said, that isn't incorrect. And that is to be expected that we get a negative solution. Obviously, as we're talking about area, we can't have a negative solution. So all we do is we negate this. Okay. So rather than it being minus a quarter, we take the region here, R, as being positive a quarter. Okay, so r is equal to a quarter. And there we have it. You can say that's unit squared if you really want. Completely up to you. But either way, that would be our solution there. Okay. And there we have it. So that brings us to the end of this video on finding areas using integration. In the next video, we're going to take a look at exam revision for integration.